Ooh, time to get that paper, man. Yeah. What up, game? What up, squad? It's your boy, Euthyrius, the realist, the coolest, the trillest, young king. Only two platform as we speak. Welcome back to that lit banger, man. Excuse me, it is late night in the Houston household, so I gotta keep it on the down low. Tight shit, you feel me? But we got content creation is the new 9 to 5 trap. Now, I, I ran across this, and I wanted to react to it because, um... I, I want to know why he said what he said or wh yeah, why he said what he said, because I'm I work a nine to five, but I also do YouTube and I don't equate them together whatsoever because I work my nine to five because I have to. I do YouTube because I want to. I feel like there's a big difference, even when you start doing YouTube full time. It's, you can't compare it to working a nine to five, a, a miserable job. You gotta go and pretend you like people, and 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 you get treated horribly, and you making pennies to the dollar than what they're getting for you. You right? Compared to me working for YouTube, and yes, they getting paid off of me, but I'm getting paid too. And not only am I getting paid from ads, I'm getting sponsorship deals. Um, 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 you know. Other people are paying me to, you know, shout them out. Um, big, a bigger, way bigger bag. You could travel. Um, you're your own boss for the most part. You got to be careful with what you post, but you don't want to post nothing crazy anyway, right? Um, it's just way better. And I can't wait. And I, 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 I can wait. I, I'm not being in a rush, but I am excited for when God can bless me, bless the day when I can do YouTube full time and make an honest living make more than an honest living you know what i'm saying we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this one if you're new subscribe like the video comment some more bangers show me to check out and let's go ahead and hear what homie got to say bang oh no if i don't post a reel every single day i'll lose the attention i speak this from experience i'm mm -hmm. not judging the number one way to kill your joy it's like a dungeon you get to do the thing you love every single day but people can tune in with foresight hindsight this is self-mastery baby i think in hindsight they give you an hour i thought you didn't honor my god in hindsight i said well you know me i feel listening to the rest of my program and, and when i think about that in hindsight that did calm me down you know you used to get excited you know for the things that you are building for the things that you are creating didn't you you know you used to immerse yourself in the process get lost in it even and then your focus gets fixed on the metrics or going viral again. Well, we, I'm, man, there's pros and cons to everything, but I bet you if you put two con, one content creator and one person that works, let's say construction together, who's going to choose what? Yeah. It's once you, you know, get big on, on, on a platform, you got to try to keep it up. You know what I'm saying? But it's all about maintaining. Now, when you try to keep up with the Joneses, of course, you're going to run yourself ragged. But I don't seen too many YouTubers that get that f that following that will watch whatever they post, no matter what it is. And that's what you're trying to reach. That's where you're trying to go. You're trying to be able to get that content where anybody will, well, your, uh, your, your fans or your subscribers will watch it no matter what, because you could post you scratching your butt. They're going to watch it. You feel me? Um, but if you're trying to keep bigger and bigger and bigger and you're chasing that that clout and that that virality of course you're going to burn yourself out you know what i'm saying honestly like i have a few goals if one if i can get to a million subscribers and, and a loyal fan base that will watch whatever i post i'm happy yeah yeah i want a million uh 10 million subscribers hell yeah i want 100 million subscribers i want all that but I also want to be able to support my family and put make sure that they don't want for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So if I'll take the 1 million subscribers and, and the loyal fan base. And I can make sure that I can always support my family. Start my own businesses on the side. And all I do is reactions. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to get into my own content later on. But right now, I'm only doing reactions. So y'all can watch me do a reaction. Y'all can watch a vlog. Y'all can watch me handle my businesses. It's so much that I can post as far as content that will keep y'all you know hungry and one more and keep my pockets right in a rush to find that we're not gonna that, pause it no more that fulfillment now well, there's nothing wrong with speed but it's key to I know speed? when it's time to shift gears first we want to harmonize right have you ever pondered and wondered why an artist's first album seems to sometimes like be their masterpiece i know we've all heard it before right like 
people will say, oh, they lost touch after their first couple of albums. You know, they're too commercial now. Oh, they sound like everybody else. What do people say? I miss the old Kanye. Actually, Kanye's albums always get better, in my opinion. But for a classic example would be uh, Chance the Rapper, if you know him, Acid Rain. Oh, amazing album. In my opinion, his best album, but it was his first project. I think it was actually a mixtape. But this pattern isn't just isolated to a few artists. You know, it's a common narrative for creatives and artists who was, who end up receiving some type of attention. And now we're on the internet. We all get a, a feel for it. Sometimes that first album emerges from a place of pure, raw creativity. You know, the artist was so immersed in their craft with care, untouched by the audience or its expectations or external pressures, right? Fewer deadlines, uh, way less responsibilities, just a couple of people in the basement making music, you know, raw essence, passion, Respect. exploration, you know, joy, and then becomes aware of the audience and then all the external pressures, right? It kind of reminds me of the biblical story of Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve were naked, just chilling, enjoying life. And then they ate the apple and they gained awareness. And they realized, oh my God, I'm naked. They became self-conscious. This happens to creatives and artists as well. Is that what happened when they ate the apple and what God didn't want them to like go through? Like, have, like basically making like choices. And I guess I don't know how to explain it. But I definitely see where, he, where he's coming from. And then, you know, the record labels are people who come in and tell you how to create what works for the radio, what doesn't, who to collaborate with, even do little product placements in the music videos, right? And then suddenly, there are a million opinions and dollars pulling that artist we love so much in so many different directions, diluting the purity and the authentic authenticity that they loved and that we loved, right? Yeah. But this isn't just limited to music. It actually is, you know, it's a universal experience right now for all creators, entrepreneurs, you know, anyone with a passion, especially in mm -hmm. this digital age. It's such a unique time. Hustle culture, right? It threatens everyone's passion. I'm telling you the raw energy we have and we cultivate and we harnessed. And then the culture demands more of it and tells you faster and tells you what to make. You know, the inner spark you have tells you to go this way. But the audience, you know, didn't give you the engagement you want. So you decide to go that way instead. If you're a content creator, you should know what he's talking about. It's like with me, man. Um, when I first started, you know, getting some subscribers, I was reacting to, you know, let's say Tom McDonald. And, uh, but eventually I got tired of reacting to Tom McDonald or I wanted to branch out. And whenever I would branch out, I would get little to no views. And I'm like, damn, well, how am I going to do what I want to do? Because everything I do, all the, all, all the views come from Tom McDonald. So it's basically you got to be, you got to, you got to, you know, try to try new things, but don't go too deep. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to keep your core audience happy. You just want to be able to try different things and ask them, hey, is this cool if I do, you know what I'm saying? Get their opinion. Of course, it's your channel. You do what you want. But you at least want to get their opinion. Because attention has become the new goal. Instead of the exploration, the joy, the fun, you know, the curiosity. I personally believe that creativity is a tool for discovery. You know, discovering our own depths, our own gifts, and then finding ways through mediums to bring them out into the world for other people to experience, right? And the external awards are really never promised. When we're making it, those aren't promised. Views aren't promised. Money isn't promised. Respect, accolades aren't promised. But the joy for sure is in the journey. And that is promised. Your craft, like I always say, blooms with care, not necessarily speed. But some of us, we have gotten so wrapped up in these algorithmic cycles and, you know, the attention we are fighting for attention, even though we can't hold our attention on one thing that we love for long enough. You know, I always say when your hobby becomes your career or your business, it can be such a great thing. You get to do the thing you love every single day. But at the same time, 
you have to protect it at all costs or you'll lose that joy for it. You know, it happened to me here and there. You know, I was here just sipping my tea, you know, using YouTube as my own personal video diary, you know, post a video whenever I felt like it really. Mm. And things took off. Opportunities came in. At a time, I really needed some opportunities. That's crazy. Resources came in. More people came in demanding more, more, more. I had so many deadlines, I didn't even know how to live. And every day started to feel crucial. If I don't finish this video today, then I fall behind and I miss this deadline. But bro, that's what work as well. Some jobs you are on a time limit. You know what I'm saying? Not every job you, is like a, a you know, a, 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 what's that shit called? A assembly line where you just work and work and work and work. Some jobs have projects. Some jobs have this, you know, where you have to do things in a certain time. That's not just what content creation. There was points I felt like I put my creativity on a manufacturing belt. That's what the algorithm kind of feels like sometimes, doesn't it? And then people will come and tell me, hey, you should hire an editor, I'll optimize your speed. And I'm like, but I like editing my videos. Mm -hmm. so like, it's a part of my process. Like I've always loved it. Right. Oh, no, 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 I'm like, I'm not doing that. And then the thing we love sometimes becomes the thing that we have to do. And the yeah. creative childlike spirit within, it dims. I recorded and edited my 45 minute podcast in under 10 minutes using Riverside. And here's how. Nigga, After I finished recording stop, stop capping. Right. It's unfortunate, but it's okay. We can always light ourselves back up. You know, hustle culture and social media. Let me tell you one thing. These platforms don't necessarily care about your expression, even if they tell you that they do. They care about attention. Mm -hmm. That's why you can have like an amazing artist or director, you know? create a film, post it on YouTube and get 5,000 views. And then a clip of Jada Pinkett saying something crazy about, well, we'll get 5.5 million views, right? We're, the, we're in the attention economy. Now, we may call it the creative economy, but it's actually the attention economy. And creativity is simply a tool that is used to harness attention. And if you're not careful you may completely lose touch with that exploration side of yourself and go right for the attention and then you're playing cat and mouse with your own validation and you may lose the love for the thing that you have always loved you woke up and you were excited to do it now you just think about the reward or how you can be received hustle culture is here to take everything that you have and leave you dry when you're done and burnt out it cares about its bottom, new, fresh blood, you understand? You know, I was browsing the platform the other day, um, I think it was uh, TikTok, and this creator was saying they don't even like the things that they make, the things that they post. They think it's negative. Damn. But they do it because it gets attention. And it's paying bills. Bro, you don't even get that much money on TikTok, so they must be making a lot of, like, getting a lot of views for that. Like, more of the bills. It's getting them rich. But what they actually love to do you know, they like to create films, you know, these films that take 30 hours to make. But unfortunately, that's too much time for the attention economy that we're in. And I could see the disappointment in their eyes, you know, like this self-imposed trap they created for themselves. And again, if you're not careful, your dream, your passion may turn into a career, which sounds great. Of course. But you also may create a new trap for yourself. Bro, you just got to separate your your content creation life between your real life. That's it. You see big artists and big YouTubers do it all the time. Like Corey Kenshin. He takes long months off. Now, he's probably one of the only ones that can do that and come back and still get the same amount of views. Now, I'm not telling you to take three months off. But take a couple days off a week. Get your mind right. And then come back, you know, with some hard content. Just separate it. It's not that hard. Check out this clip by SZA. Thing. I hate going to the studio because it, it's like a dungeon. It just doesn't sound like that. Honestly, I've got to say as a fan, it sounds like it's a place of joy because no, no the way that you... I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That thing. I hate going to the studio because it, it's like a dungeon. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> That's the best response to that statement ever. I'm sorry that you feel that way. It's not. Um, <laughs> One of the biggest recording artists in the culture right now, you know, beautiful voice, beautiful vibe, says, I hate going to the studio. It's a dungeon. What? I mean, that's different, though. Studio, some studios are actually, like, closed off. You know what I'm saying? You can record videos anywhere, especially if you're, I mean, if you're a gamer, you know, well, you have your room or whatever, but I don't know. It's just different. You know what I'm saying? A, a studio is actually, like, a, a black hole. Do you think it started out like that? Do you think it started out like this? Probably no. not, nigga. She probably used to rush home from her job that she hated just to have the opportunity to be in the studio, to play, to sing, to collaborate. Oh, new producer. Oh, let me hear those beats. But fame, the metrics, the audience, and the constant pressure ruined that thing that once brought her peace into something that now causes constant anxiety for her. Yeah. But when I go to the studio, I think about like, damn, I have to do a good job. I have to come out of here with something. If I leave, if I'm in the studio for eight hours yeah. and I don't leave with anything that I can listen to in the car on the way home, yeah. then it makes me feel like. Let me tell you something. The number one way to kill your joy is the expectation that you put on yourself. This has to be good before you even start, before you even get the energy moving, before you explore, you put this demand out. This has to be good today. I mean, but at what point does that, is that like what you have to do? You feel me? To be, to, to, to be, to separate yourself. Cause sometimes like me, I don't edit my videos. I'm not going to lie. A lot of times I probably should, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? Is that probably might go hinder me? Maybe, but I do reactions. So it's really not that hard to. You like you ain't really missing anything, you know what I'm saying? But when you're doing gaming videos and edit, and, you know, uh, in vlogs and stuff like that, you want to keep your people engaged. You have to take pride in what you're doing. I Meaning it might take a little while to to make it perfect. Now, not every video is gonna be perfect, but you should want your videos to be like have a certain level about your videos that you want them to be. You know what I mean? Anything less, you might as well not even post it, or you should, but. Expect backlash. The and audience long is waiting. Video. Oh no, if I don't post a reel every single day, I'll lose the attention and everyone will forget about me. Oh no, my last video only got 2,000 views. I have to post four things tomorrow to make up. Shit, most of my videos don't even hit 2, 2K. I wish my shit hit 2K. One of my videos about to blow up soon, so I'm not even tripping for it. Or, oh no, I only have six hours today. I gotta submit this video to today's sponsor which is squarespace the place where i actually host my own website that has information on how you can join my private community right success will come right and balancing success and your artistic integrity is not easy but it's not impossible no. No. I think it's actually an opportunity, you know? Why not do the things we love? But when we love something, what does it require? It requires care, it requires boundaries, and consistent effort around it. The key is to stay true to our essence, navigating those demands and temptations of success. There's nothing wrong with it but it's a balancing act. If you have found yourself constantly judging your own ideas, oh, the algorithm's not gonna like that, in this constant rush, in this worry, in this anxiety, and you step into your art, your creation, or whatever you do, and it's like, it's just not fun anymore. You need to make a shift. You've allowed the outside world to get into your process. You've allowed these platforms to get into your process. Again, all they care about is attention we don't chase attention we create and then we share and then we go and create again and how do we do this well one we stay grounded in our why Preach. we need to regularly remind ourselves why you started you know was it the love for the music or the storytelling or the thrill of creating something and you know sharing it return back to your why Realign yourself 
and release some of those external unnecessary pressures. And then set boundaries. Learn to say no. Mm. Not every opportunity or suggestion aligns with your vision or values. Yep. Setting boundaries is how you preserve the special thing that you have and your mental well-being. Mm -hmm. And then balance passion with practicality, right? It's important to be practical about your career, but also carve out space for those passion projects, the things that just ignite you. And this is often where your true creativity shines, unfettered by external expectations. I actually says this, says this as well. She's like, the things I try to make, like when I go to try to make a big record, it doesn't happen. It's always when I'm not even trying and the energy is just flowing. Right. That's what I keep, that's what I keep hearing. Like the videos that like, I mean, it happens even today. The videos I be thinking is going to go crazy, going to bust. They do horrible. You feel me? But some of the videos I don't really care about do good. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why none of my videos have blown up. I couldn't tell you. Oh, people could say, oh, you don't do this. You don't do that. I don't really think that's the case, bro. I post pretty decent videos. You know what I'm saying? My commentary be on point. I engage with you guys. I don't know why my videos don't blow up. You know what I mean? But I'm praying one of these motherfuckers do. And, you know, and get me right. I, know, I, I speak this from experience. I'm mm -hmm. not judging because I'm the same. When I'm li less self-aware about my experience in the moment is mm -hmm. when I'm actually at my best. Like, I'll be working on something I care about so much that's so serious. And I'm like, I'll oh, just put on anything random. I just need like 10 minutes to just like hear something else. And that's what I'll write a whole damn song to. It'll be I Hate You or Blind or Kill Bill yeah. or The Weeknd. All those songs were palate cleanser moments in between me actually trying to make the real song of that night. Next, connect with the community, you know, connect with this community, join this community. It's an amazing community where you can share values and, you know, your artistic vision and remind each other and support one another, share our tips and our processes, and have reflections that remind us what matter. And one thing I think is so important, have regular creative retreats, even if it's just one day, but one day where you're just like, you know what? No pressure, you know, no structure. I'm just gonna do me. You know, this isn't even for anybody. I'm not even posting it. I'm not even selling it. This is just to play. And always continue to experiment, right? Allow yourself the freedom to experiment. Give yourself that time and that space. No, oh, don't be, oh, I gotta post every space. single day or else I will lose attention. If you believe that you have true talent and value, you will always be able to connect with a community. That's true. That loves what you are doing. Even if you take some time for yourself, right? Don't get attached to the attention economy. Come back to the reasons why you do what you do. Because that is the very thing that fuels you and gives you that sense of peace and fulfillment. Don't allow your hobby, your passion, your creative outlets to become the new nine to five trap. Guess what? We can also free ourselves as well. I'll see you soon. Why he talk so low like that? That like, like damn nigga, put more spunk in your voice. This shit made me, I don't know if y'all could tell, but I literally almost fell asleep listening to this nigga talk. What you doing, Paul? I love you. Anyway, uh, if you're new, subscribe, like the video, comment somewhere, bring us. Comment what y'all think. Is not is 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 consecration a new nine to five trap, or is this dude just talking out his ass? How many subscribers he got? This dude got 827k subscribers. So this is coming from a guy. Let's see. How long he been doing YouTube? Uh, I mean, he's been doing it for a good little while. But, you know, I feel like people that have, like, a fan base like this and is making money on YouTube, I don't feel like they should talk about a 9 to 5 because I understand y'all probably did work a 9 to 5 before. But if you're not doing it at that current time, 
you will not be physically there at that moment in time. You just going off memories. People like me are going through this shit. Right, my shift starts tomorrow. I've been off since Sunday. My shift starts tomorrow. I want to be around my kids all day. I want to make sure that I I want to do this all day. Go live, uh, 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 you know, with y'all and be able to, you know, do that. But I can't right now. I got to go to work. So, no, I would rather be trapped in this content creation, chasing whatever, than chasing a BS check at the end of the week. I thank God for it, though. I thank God for my job. Like, that job really changed my life for real. I'm not going to lie. But I need to make this YouTube thing work because my I can't do that regular smeggler degler, go to work, go home until I'm get old. You feel me? I need some excitement in my life. I need to give my kids, I need to make sure I leave my kids with something like a few businesses, a house, somewhere they can always call home. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to get that working a nine to five. No matter if I go to school, no matter nothing. You know what is going to get me there? Doing this, doing YouTube. One day, one of my videos will blow up and it will put my channel on the map forever. And I will be able to do YouTube, tick, uh, TikTok, Twitch, whatever. I'll be able to do anything. Y'all be, y'all just going to want to just see my pretty face. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it's going to be. You feel me? And this is what I do it for right here. This little guy right here, he's only three, but he my youngest. And all my older, I got older kids that I wish I would have, you know, had a big house and you know front yard and all the other stuff. But that's fine because they gonna grow up. And have that, you know what I'm saying? And he gonna have it when he when he young type shit. You feel me? But anyway, enough talking, man. We gone.